everyone, my name is Lauren Barrett. I'm a winemaking specialist with Anardis USA. And today in our quick tip series, I'll be discussing malolactic fermentation and the Anardis ML bacteria range. Now, malolactic bacteria, also known as lactic acid bacteria, represent a diverse group of bacteria whose primary end metabolite is lactic acid. The three genera found in grape must and wine belong to lactobacillus, enococcus, and pediococcus. Now, the metabolic activity of these bacteria can alter aspects of wine chemistry and aroma both positively and negatively, depending on the bacteria strain and must composition. This brings us to the main lactic acid bacteria used in wine making, which is Enococcus eni. Now, you may ask why Enococcus, and the main reason is it's used over other species of lactic acid bacteria is due to its specific niche adaptation to the harsh environment of wine, along with the metabolism efficiency and contribution of desirable wine sensory components. It also has a stabilization effect with the removal of excess nutrients and substrates for spoilage organisms such as Britannomyces. Although Enococcus is robust and fastidious, there are still many stress factors that influence its growth, metabolism, and secondary fermentation efficiency. Now, malolactic fermentation can occur spontaneously, simultaneously, and more commonly after the completion of alcohol, alcoholic fermentation. Native bacteria present in must typically proliferate in the first days before Saccharomyces dominance and resulting alcoholic fermentation, the onset of which it results in this massive population die off, leaving a significantly reduced malolactic bacteria population. This residual, hopefully well adapted population, let's say, slowly grows and commences malolactic fermentation as alcoholic fermentation finishes. For this reason, native malolactic bacteria can be unreliable, sluggish, and increase the chance for spoilage and the accumulation of negative compounds and off flavors. Commercially available malolactic bacteria cultures remove most of these associated risks, keeping in mind that culture acclimatization and population establishments is crucial for ensuring successful complete malolactic fermentation. Considering this ecological succession of malolactic bacteria and various other organisms in wine, um, there's varying inoculation strategies that have been implemented, such as sequential inoculation, or also known as co-inoculation, which is a really useful tool for speeding up malolactic fermentation. Winemakers are still a little apprehensive to utilize co-inoculation techniques, as historical research has reported yeast and bacteria antagonism and increased levels of VA. Um, today, many studies are contradicting these results and showing co-inoculation as a valid alternative to performing malolactic fermentation after alcoholic, and in doing so, reducing processing time, biogenic amine formation, while respecting wine quality. Yeast, bacteria, and a strain pair are critical factors with implementing co-inoculation strategies, and make sure to inquire what specific yeast and bacteria strain pairs are recommended within our portfolio if you're curious about trying co-inoculation strategies. Now, this brings us to the question of to inoculate or not to inoculate. Let's run through the good and the bad with these strategies and start with spontaneous malolactic fermentation, where we really have no characterization or idea of what the consortium of malolactic bacteria community members are conducting secondary. This can result in wines with elevated levels of acid aldehyde and acetic acid, increased levels of biogenic amines, um, also increased levels of ethyl carbamate, which is a carcinogen, and as well as lactic acid associated faults such as mousiness and ropiness. Now, with pure strain selection, we do have data of the strain characteristics, and with that, more direction for driving wine quality and specific styles. This selection allows for more precise control of aroma and flavor modification with the reassurance of a fast, complete malolactic fermentation. Inoculating with pure strain culture significantly reduces the time of malolactic fermentation and also mitigates spoilage risks associated with a longer, sluggish malolactic fermentation. Now here we have the Anardis ML range, and with each strain has different ideal conditions of growth. Um, for this reason, the success of malolactic fermentation depends on wine parameters and the choice of the most suitable strain. Consider the addition of malolactic bacteria-specific nutrients, especially in harsh wine environments. 
Now with Anardis ML Uno, um, this strain provides a quick starting and complete malactic fermentation in both white and red wines under normal conditions. It respects the organoleptic characteristics of wine and reduces the risk of uncontrolled fermentation, producing clean varietal wines. Anardis ML MCW contributes notes of cream and butter as it's been selected specifically for its diacetyl production. It performs fast malolactic fermentation in wines with high alcohol content and low pH conditions and is suitable for reds, whites, and sparkling wines. And last but not least, we have ML Silver, which is well suited for high alcohol and high polyphenol content wines. It can also thrive with lower pHs and elevated levels of total sulfur dioxide. It works well in both red and white wines and it produces wines with clean, floral, fruity, and complex aromas. Now, considering each strain's technical feature, it's still crucial to know your stress factors and increase survival factors in difficult conditions for malolactic fermentation. Under normal conditions with a pH between 3.4 and 3.6, let's say an alcohol less than 13%, one can simply rehydrate bacteria and inoculate wine without having to increase survival factors with nutrients or an acclimatization step. Now, on the other hand, under difficult conditions where there's a lower pH, increased levels of sulfur dioxide, and an alcohol greater than 13%, it's important to increase survival factors by modifying the acclimatization step and utilizing ML-specific nutrients like Nutriform Osmobacti and Nutriform ML to ensure a complete, healthy malactic fermentation. Now, to ensure a successful malactic fermentation, fermentation, check out the outline resources and contact your local and artist branch for all of your winemaking needs. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next Quick Tips video, and happy harvest, everyone. Cheers.